from the Foo Fighters, and uh, it's an honor to be here. And uh, I'm going to tell you the story of our song, Everlong. Um, Everlong was written, I think, in 1996, probably in the winter of 90. Six when we were making our second album, The Color and the Shape. You know, if you've ever been in the studio with a band for a long period of time and you're recording multiple songs, you know, there's a lot of time just sort of sitting around waiting for something to happen. And in that time, I remember sitting in like an isolation booth, looking out at the other guys in the band, um, waiting in between takes to play. And um, it was at a studio outside of Seattle called, I think it was called Bear Creek or something like that. Kind of like this weird house and barn outside of town so I was sitting in the isolation booth waiting to do a take of another song and I just started playing this chord. Now, I'm not a trained musician, so I don't know what that chord is. I don't know what you would call it. I can't read music, I'm not sure. But I immediately was like, oh, that kind of sounds like Sonic Youth is the first thing I thought. One of my favorite bands of all time, Sonic Youth. I'm like, wow, that's such a cool Sonic Youth chord. So I was kind of playing with it, and then I kind of realized, oh, well, I could do that as well. What's that chord? No clue. Don't know what it's called. Don't know anything about guitar. But I realized you could sort of move it around. And uh, so in between takes, I would kind of mess around with this thing, you know, strum around with it. Now at the time, I was, uh, I was breaking up with a girl that I had been with for a while. So I was sort of in the middle of this intense emotional period. And for whatever reason, um, the emotion or the feeling I got when I would play this succession of chords sort of touched on whatever that emotion was. Um, so we continued recording. In the meantime, uh, I my relationship ended and I was in a very uh, difficult place. I remember it was right around Christmas. I went back to uh, Virginia where I grew up and at this point the, the song had sort of evolved into Also, not to get too like meso technical or whatever, because I'm not a trained guitar player, I actually look at this guitar, at this instrument, like it's a drum set. So I look at the lower strings like kicks and snares, and I look at the higher strings almost as if they're cymbals. So the pattern in which I'm strumming, the It's almost like a kick drum pattern, like do do da do da da do da do do da do da 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 like that. Anyway, so because of the emotional place I was in, I started writing the lyrics to this song, and um, and they come from a real place. Um, so the song started to come together, 
And I wanted to record it quickly so I didn't forget it. I had a friend named Jeff Turner in Washington, D.C., one of my old punk rock friends from the 80s. He had a studio next to this great bar called the Black Cat on 14th Street. And I said, hey, could I come in and just do a demo really quick? He said, sure. And um, without having it fully formed, I just kind of went in. I put down a drum track. I put down the guitars and the bass, and I sang it into a microphone for the first time. And, um, and it, it did seem to make sense. The lyric and the melody at the time where I was uh, emotionally, it all made sense. And I think that that's what songs should be. They should be something that um, not only the, the tone or the melody or, or dynamic of the instrumental, but also the lyric um, match in a way that it represents how you feel at that moment. I recorded the song and I brought it back to the guys. I remember actually I played it for um, Thurston and Kim from Sonic Youth because I was deathly afraid that I had just just totally like ripped off the Sonic Youth song somehow. And I said, uh, I said, oh, listen to this thing I just recorded. And they listened. I said, listen to this demo that I did. And they said, uh, that's, why is that a demo? Why, why, should, why isn't that the album? And it just felt so off the cuff and unofficial. I considered it to be a demo. Well, we went in and we re-recorded it. And that's the song that you hear uh, on the radio today. And, side note, I never considered doing it um, acoustically. I thought it was a rock song until, the, I think it was the first time we did the Howard Stern show. Howard Stern loved the song. And when you do the Howard Stern show at six o'clock in the morning and you don't want to touch an instrument or get close to a microphone, but he asked, that I play it um, acoustically. And um, so I did. And in a way, it gave the song a whole new rebirth. This is long after it was released, I think, but it gave the song kind of a whole new life. Because I think sometimes when I do it this way, it really does peel back a lot of the bells and whistles and the other noise when it's just the lyric and the guitar and um, my voice, I think it, it kind of makes the song feel the way I had always wished it felt. So I'll shut up now. This is a song called Everlong. <laughs> 